Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about sleep. Dr. Daniel Barone, happy uh, April Fool's Day. So uh, I got asked this question today, actually from a, um, an, a online website called Pop Sugar. I'll uh, post it to my, to my uh, Facebook page once, I, uh, once it publishes. But they had asked me about snoozing, the whole idea of somebody snoozing. Uh, snoozing is an interesting topic. So everybody kind of likes that sensation of I wake up, uh, the alarm goes off, I press the button, I fall back to sleep. And even if it's that just 10 minutes of, of joy, uh, it's still hard to resist. What happens is when we snooze, serotonin gets released. So it feels good. It's a, it's a nice, pleasurable feeling to kind of fall back to sleep. The problem, though, is that snoozing uh, is kind of a um, fool's gold, right? So our brain, when we fall asleep and we wake up, it's not like an on-off switch, right? So, so in the morning, we don't wake up and we press a button and our brain just you know, goes right into action. And at nighttime, it's not like we just shut our brain off and, we, and we're, we're uh, completely unconscious. Uh, in fact, both processes take time. You know, the whole process of sleep onset as we've talked about in previous videos, is based on melatonin that gets released when the lights go down and when the sun goes down. And that begins the cascade of, of many different uh, chemicals in the brain kind of um, doing their thing, their thing. And then once we are asleep, our brain is not, is not off. Uh, as we've talked about in, in, the, in other videos, the, um, the brain in some cases is actually just as active as when we're awake, if not more so, right? We've talked about REM sleep before, rapid eye movement sleep, and the whole idea of dreaming, right? So imagine this, the brain is actually creating the environment as well as responding to the environment. So that's actually in some cases more uh, energy required than, than even just being awake, right? So the process of waking up is similar, right? So let's say it begins a couple of hours before we actually have our habitual wake time. So if you normally get up at seven o'clock every morning, probably five o'clock or so that process has started, okay? And that probably is also related to the sun. If there's, you know, a little bit of sunlight coming in, you know, the body understands that this is, this is the time I'm supposed to be starting to wake up. So that process takes some time. So then the alarm goes off, you wake up, right? And things like dopamine, adrenaline, uh, norepinephrine, these things which, which the brain makes, they start getting released in various, various ways. And that helps us to wake up and become more alert. And then probably, you know, an hour or so from the time we've woken up, we are at our full alertness, if you will, right? So that's what happens normally. When we snooze, however, right, we're, t we're taking that process and truncating it, cutting it off. So, as I said, the alarm goes off, we press the button, serotonin gets released, feels good, we go back to sleep. And this is where the problem comes into play. The brain now is not sure what the hell is going on, right? So the person falls back to sleep, that's fine, okay? But then when they go to wake up again, 10 minutes later, the brain is really confused. And now, am I supposed to be asleep? Am I supposed to be awake? What's going on here? And as a result of that, the person may feel, or you may feel, more drowsy, more hungover, almost worse uh, as a result of this, probably for more hours later into the day than you would have if you just would have woken up at one time. All right? So what I tell my, all my patients is it's better to just set the alarm as late as is humanly possible for you to wake up and still, you know, make it to work on time, and then just just wake up at that time, and, and just do the best you can to just pop out of bed. That is better. It's not as pleasurable as hitting the snooze button, that's for sure, but it is it is um, it is important to kind of wake up and then get right into uh, uh, you know your alertness happening. Um, now, if you know, you wake up every single morning and you just completely drag it out of bed and it's it's awful. I mean, there may be something else going on other than just, you know, you, <laughs> you want to snooze. 
Uh, that's where it comes into play of somebody maybe sleep deprived is one thing. So chronically sleep deprived. The other may be that there's something else going on in the sleep, like sleep apnea, for example, where the sleep is disrupted because of stoppages of breathing. So if this is happening to you quite frequently, you may want to go see someone like myself or, or, uh, or just even just your primary care doctor and find out and make sure nothing untoward is happening in your sleep. But, um, yeah, it's, a. Uh, it's a gift and a curse, I guess, this whole snooze button, because it does, it, it is a nice feeling, but, you know, it also is uh, it's going to screw you up, screw up your day um, energy-wise. So, uh, you know, try to do a little bit better than that. And, uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. My book is being re-released as a paperback in May. Let's talk about sleep. It's going to have the same same cover uh and um yeah please like this video please subscribe to the channel please pass it along to your friends and family and uh, let's get let's get america sleeping better right until next time sleep well